Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about a very popular clustering algorithm known as the k-means clustering. Let's say we have some data. These are the observations represented by the blue dots on the screen. Now, we are interested in doing clustering here, which means we want to club some of these points which are closer to each other and different from the other groups. So the step one in k-means clustering is that you should know the number of clusters that you want to create. Let's say in this case, we decide that the number of clusters we want to get are three. The moment you look at this data, you would probably think it's very simple. If I need three clusters, I can just visually tell you which are the three clusters, which are the three groups which seem closer to each other and different from the rest. But the question is, how would a computer, a machine, decide something like this? So there is a logical approach to this. That's what we're going to discuss next. Let's say we know the number of clusters that we eventually want. So the step two is that we begin by selecting some of these points randomly as the cluster seems or cluster center. This will be a random selection from within these points that have been provided to us. So let's see this. So we selected this point, the green one, the red one, and this blue one here. These are our randomly selected cluster scenes or cluster centers as we may call them. Now the step three is that we have to assign the points to the closest seed. What do we mean by this? So we have to look at the points which are closest to this green cluster seed or cluster center. You can think of these three points probably would be the closer to the green one compared to any other cluster seed. So if we assign them the green color, it would look like this. Similarly, the points closer to the red seed, these are the points which are closer to the red compared to any of the original seeds. This was the green original seed and this was the blue original seed. So we will say these points definitely deserve to be red. Likewise, we can probably think of these points here, these points here as also the points which are closer to the red one compared to any other color. So they should be colored accordingly, which is again an assignment to the closest seed. And rest of them would obviously be given to the blue seed. At this stage, we need to calculate the centroid of each of the groups. That's step four. So we will calculate the centroid of the green ones. Let's say this is the center. Centroid is nothing but an average or mean. That's why this is called a k-means clustering. Now we can calculate the centroid for the red one. Let's say this is the centroid and the centroid for the blue ones. So let's say this is the centroid. Now we are going to repeat the step three. This time we will be looking at the proximity of all the points with respect to the newly formed centroid. So are there points which are closer to the green centroid compared to any other centroid? Maybe we can say this particular point is closer to this green centroid compared to the other centroids, which are farther. So we perform the step three again, and we give it the appropriate membership. Similarly, do we have points here which are closer to the red centroid compared to the blue or green centroid? Maybe we can say these points here are all closer to the red centroid. So we appropriately assign them the red color. And the remaining, of course, stay with the blue centroid. Once again, we have to repeat the step four, which was calculate the centroid again. Why again? Because we have added some new points. The mean will be revisited. So let's say the green centroid shifts a little bit here. The red centroid would also shift a little bit. And now the blue centroid will be drawn more towards the points where it has high density. So you can see this shifts again. Once again, we have to repeat the step three, which is that we have to check are there points which are closer to green centroid compared to the other centroid? And if so, we will have to assign them the membership accordingly. So if we check that again, you can see that these points go to the green centroid. And this point here, of course, is now closer to the red centroid than to any other centroid. So we have to give it appropriate membership. Once again, we will have to recalculate the centroid. So this is again step four. So step three and four are to be repeated. Let's see. The green centroid shifts here further. The red centroid now shifts. And because we earlier had a blue point here, which we have now given to the red centroid, the blue centroid would now be calculated based on these five points only. So this will again shift a little bit. So we have to keep on repeating these steps till we get stable clusters. What do we mean by stable clusters? We will not see any change any further. And I think we've reached that. So these become our final clusters. Just imagine you could look at the data and talk about this as the three possible clusters. This is where we originally started. Then why did we have to follow this path? One, I said that it's an element of human intelligence that we can just look at the data and find out these clusters. So we could do that very conveniently, whereas a machine had to take so many steps to arrive at this decision. The second point is, it is not always going to be so easy that you can look at the data and decide. Right now, we are looking at a two-dimensional plot. 
imagine if we were looking at data points which are collected over multiple columns, let's say 10 columns. That is something you can't even visualize on a two-dimensional screen. So, so to be able to find the clusters by just looking at the data is not a practical solution in the real world. It works only up to two dimensions. That's why it makes sense to perform k-means clustering. Now, as you can imagine, k-means clustering is fairly intuitive. All it relies on is the initial random selection. And then thereafter, you're just calculating the distance of the points with respect to the centers or centroids. And then you are reassigning the points to the closest centroid and again calculating the centroid and so on and so forth. But there are certain drawbacks with k-means clustering as well. Let's understand those. So what happens when we have outliers present in the data? What are outliers? Outliers are extreme value. So let's say this particular black point here represents an outlier, an extreme value. Now, if we have already decided that we're going to have three clusters, that's what the first step was in k-means cluster. If you've already decided that, no matter what the point is, it's definitely going to get one or the other cluster membership. Perhaps the one which is closest to it. So this blue centroid, you can imagine, is closest to this black point. So it would eventually get the membership of this cluster. You would end up clustering these points together. But do you realize that this point is not really similar to the rest of the points in this cluster? It's just a forced clustering. When you have outliers present in the data, you may not end up getting the right clusters in case of k-mean clustering. This is one drawback. So now that this point is a part of this particular cluster, you will once again calculate the centroid and your centroid would be here. But imagine, is this the right cluster? Just because you had to assign this particular point to one or the other cluster, you ended up giving it this particular cluster. In reality, this particular point is a lot different from the rest of the points in the cluster. A good cluster is formed when the points within a cluster are more alike or similar and are different from the other clusters. So this is not good. Second point, a lot depends on the initial starting point. Remember we said we will be starting with three random points because we chose three clusters. So we took three random points in our data. But if the choice of the three random points is different, could that increase the number of steps taken to perform this task? Why is the number of steps important? Because you will be dealing with records which are running into millions. Somewhere the compute also becomes important. How soon do you arrive at the best result? In this case, let's imagine we would have chosen these points somewhat differently. So let's say the green point is here, the blue point is here, but the red point instead of being here is here now. Now you can imagine choosing the nearest points here in the very first go would be very easy for you because these points are clearly closer to green compared to any other color. These points are clearly closer to red compared to any other color. You can assign them a red color. And these points are clearly closer to the blue compared to the any other color. So you can assign them blue color. See how soon you got the right cluster membership. It would not require you to do too many iterations now because you can calculate the centroid and there would be no competition between whether this point should be assigned to a green center or a red center. This is where we use something called as a k-means plus plus. It's kind of a method which optimizes the k-means algorithm. It cuts down on the number of steps that you need to be able to arrive at the best cluster. Let's see how does this work. So it says, if you want three clusters, don't start with three random seeds. Start with just the first seed. So let's say we took the first seed here. Now the step two says, you find the point which is farthest from this particular cluster center that you've randomly selected. So amongst all these points that you have available here, you have to find the one which is farthest from this point. So let's say we find this point is the farthest point, and this becomes our second cluster center. Now you already have two cluster centers. What you have to do is, with respect to each cluster center, look at the remaining points. Points, not the other cluster center. Look at the remaining points as to how far they are and choose the one at the maximum distance. So now, with respect to both the cluster centers, we have to find out the points which are at the maximum distance. Notice this time, this red point will not participate or this blue point here would not participate in calculating distance with each other. We already chose this red point, considering it as the farthest point. So this would no longer participate in the distance calculation. You have to find out the next farthest point from this blue cluster center, and you have to find out the farthest point from this red cluster center. So let's say we draw all possible lines here and we zero down to a particular distance represented by this orange line as the one which is the maximum distance from this blue cluster center. Likewise, we have to do this for the red cluster center. We have to find out the point at the maximum distance. And let's say we zero down to this particular point. 
So now we have two competing distances. Distance D1 is the longest distance that a point has from the cluster center 1, which is the blue one. And distance D2 is the longest distance that a point has from the cluster center 2, which is this red one. Whichever point has the greater distance of the two would be the one that you'll choose as the third cluster center. So in this case, D2 seems greater than D1. That's why we will choose this as the third cluster center. Now, if you see, we seem to have already smartly arrived at the points properly. And now it would not be very difficult for us to ascertain that these points seem to be all closer to the green one compared to any other color. So they should be given the green cluster center membership. These points would be all closer to the red one compared to any other cluster center. So they should be given red. So K means plus plus, if you see, has added speed to your execution. You've been able to arrive at the same decision much faster. The inbuilt algorithm in scikit-learn for K means clustering has this intelligence baked in. In our next video, we will be performing the hands-on k-means clustering in Python using scikit-learn. Hope you got the necessary critical foundations for k-means clustering. Keep watching for more. Thank you.